Welcome back to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Today's episode, powered by Hayabusa, is all about kick finishes I'd like to see more in combat sports. For those who have been following my career for a long time, know that one of my best finishes was my right high kick to the head, which is set up a lot of times by low kicks. And usually when you watch a lot of combat sports, whether it's kickboxing, mixed martial arts, or Muay Thai, you usually see the high kick as the biggest finishing weapon. Slow kicks, body kicks, all set up the big head kick finish. And to me, it is the ultimate knockout that you want when it comes to fighting. To me, it gives me the most satisfaction. It's the ultimate knockout, which puts together good technique, good timing, and that ultimate finish that we all want in our competition. But there's a lot of head kick finishes that I would like to see more of that are very popular strikes. And I'm actually surprised we don't see more of them. The first one I'm gonna talk about is that front kick to the face. A lot of times when we look at the teep, we always see the front kick or the teep as a defensive weapon to the body. To the body, to the body, it keeps our opponent away, it keeps us at long range and really lets us move. We see it a lot in Muay Thai, especially because the lead leg a lot of time is light because they're good at blocking the kicks. So the front kick to the body is a very effective weapon at managing distance. But when we have seen, like the, the Belforts, the Anderson Silvas, that front kick to the face can be very effective. When learning martial arts, one of the first kicks you will learn is the front kick. It's very easy, it's very straight line, and very effective. It's like the jab for kicking. So a lot of times, when you mix in that body, you get a good reaction from your opponent. Either the hands come down, they wanna grab it, or they kinda of brace themselves, kinda of tuck their core in, which almost leaves the chin exposed. So, in my mind, you have to start mixing those front kicks to the chin and to the face a lot more. Especially because they're so much, they're so often used to the body that this slight little angle difference and the change in height will a lot of times give you a good finish. And because it's a nice chambered shot, nice and close, pounding its way up, a lot of times when you do land that, it's going to create a lot of damage. So mixing that front kick to the head is the first head kick finish I'd like to see more. The second kick finish I'd like to see more of is the liver kick to the body. Every time you want to kick the body, a lot of times you see fighters really dig, throw with so much power, and they really want to hit with the higher part of the shin. Because when you learn martial arts and you learn those powerful round kicks, it's all about digging the shin into the pad, into your opponent's legs, into the body. But one of the most effective kicks that you can throw is a liver kick slap to the body. And I call it a slap because you don't need much power and force to hurt the liver. And this is one where I'll use a lot in sparring because you're not gonna hurt your opponent too or your training partner so much, but it gives that damage enough to get them to drop to that liver shot. So you're gonna see when I throw this switch kick to the body, it's not with a lot of power and I'm, I'm more looking at the snap of it. That's why I'm calling it a slap. I'm looking for hit of the liver and return right away. And when I'm doing this kick, I'm gonna hit with the instep. So I'm planting my instep on my opponent's liver. This way it keeps me at long range. Even if they wanna throw a counter punch, which a lot of people do versus kicks, punches versus kicks. So as I kick and the punch comes, because I'm using my instep and kicking at longer range, I can stay and avoid that counter shot a lot more effectively. Okay, so liver slaps, I feel, could be a great setup, especially with good punches and especially in MMA where guys want to block maybe with high hands or hands away from the body. It just opens up that liver slap. So let's see more of those in combat sports. The third kick we don't really see at all is the lead hook kick. And coming from a traditional Taekwondo background, the lead side kick to the hook kick was one of my most effective weapons. A lot of times in competition, I wouldn't even put my foot down to score the shot. Side kick right into my hook kick really changes angles and confuses your opponents. So those fighters who haven't come from those traditional sides, we don't really see side kicks and lead hook kicks much. And if I do see a hook kick, it's gonna come from a spinning hook kick, right? You wanna create that momentum. But someone like a Wonder Boy Thompson or, or, or traditional karate fighters like to keep their strong leg in the front, right? It's faster, they could move, evade, different, uh, uh, evade distance and counter shots. So you put your strongest weapon closest to your target. So if you're an orthodox fighter, you would stand southpaw because you want your right leg in front. It's good to stab, good to move away. 
but that lead hook kick setup off of side kick is very hard to control and it's very hard to get your opponent to block it. Because they're so used to the side kicks coming here, it's just like straight punches and hooks. You create one attack down the center line and then the other one comes around. And because we don't see this lead hook kick very often, they do land really well. Especially if you can mix them up with good power kicks, get your opponents to shell, get them biting on your feints, you're gonna see that this lead hook kick can create a lot of damage. The fourth type of finish that we don't see a lot of via kicks is doubling up the same side kick. A lot of times our classic combinations happen punch to kick and that kind of gets predictable. So those who watch my channel a lot, I always say you have to mix up and create more unorthodox style combinations. So if you continually put left, right, left, right, punch to kick, it becomes very predictable. So this is where you can create you know, different cadence, different rhythms to kind of confuse your opponent. So a lot of times when I throw, for example, my left kick, I'm gonna throw my left kick as a double and I'm always changing levels. Inside body, body head, head body. So you wanna create those differences. And even a lot of the times you'll notice that a lot of fighters always go to the leg first then to the body. You, you rarely see someone go maybe a left kick to the head into a, a low kick right after. So doubling up your kicks can be effective and we don't see them enough especially when you change levels and you put them back to back, you can see a lot of finishes. And even in some of my careers, I have thrown maybe three or four low kicks in a row, almost as one combination, constantly hitting the same part of my opponent's leg. So doubling and tripling up, especially with changing levels, will get you a lot of success. Try it out, confuse your opponent, and get those head kick finishes. The fifth and final unique kick finish that I'd like to see more of in combat sports has to be the old school axe kick. It's very difficult to land because you have to come up and drop the hammer right down on your opponent's head. And it takes a lot of flexibility and a lot of years of training, but it's something we don't see too much in more modern MMA and even in modern kickboxing. A lot of the old school K1 fighters and the old school kickboxers came from a Kyokushin background, which they did have that dexterity, they did have that body style and the, and the arsenal to be able to mix those axe kicks. So if you've come from more modern MMA now where you've just started with grappling and just Muay Thai, you don't know these types of kicks. So this is where they can become more effective. If you're not used to blocking axe kicks, hook kicks, double kicks. It just means you're going to land them more successfully in the fight. Especially if someone's not used to seeing those shots, it's very difficult and makes it that much more effective to land. Okay, so quick review. A lot of times we learn traditional strikes, our round kicks, our front kicks, our side kicks, but we don't know how to change them up slightly to be able to get those big finishes we're looking for. And when it comes to kick finishes, you have to tr create angle changes, whether it's the front kick or the round kick, keep changing levels and it's just gonna add to the success of landing them and getting that knockout that you're looking for. So make sure you keep liking and subscribing to Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date. And if you're liking any of the gear, make sure you head over to HayabusaFight.com. Make sure you check out their T3 boxing gloves as they're my personal favorite. You will find very few gloves that have the knuckle and wrist protection that these gloves have. HayabusaFight.com. And if you like any of the bazooka gear I'm wearing, head over to BazookaShop.com and pick up some t-shirts and tank tops and hats and all different types of merchandise. So stay safe, stay healthy, and we're gonna see you here next week at Bazooka Kickboxing and MMA.